Brilliant. Okay, so um, very quickly then, um, I whiz through what I would like to talk about. So a little bit about me, and then I'm going to move on to the concerns facing our um, children and young people today. But Gareth's already sort of spoken about some of those, so that's good. I can whiz on to some physical activity guidelines, again, which has been touched upon already, and so that I can spend more time on programmes and actionable strategies um, for teachers to be able to implement and um, start taking into the classroom, hopefully, as from now. Um, that will involve talking about a few of um, the resources that we have here at Twinkle, um, and as well as some top tips to hopefully hopefully um, help you with implementing some of these strategies. And the pros and cons of physical activity on learning. And then finally, I'll finish with um, changing the narrative. So um, as you, as it's already been mentioned, I've I always had a background in sport um, and PE. Um, my parents met through sport and I've grown up, you know, in a sporting environment and being physically active. Um, but also I've had a very positive experience of school sport and PE, both at primary and secondary level myself. Um, and I'm sure between everybody that's here, we'll have had a range of different experiences of PE and physical activity from our school days. Some good, hopefully, but I'm sure not all good. Um, and it's just important to, to, to realise that these experiences will have had a huge impact on our relationship with physical activity today, as Gareth sort of pointed out. And there'll be other factors, of course, that will have played their part. But it's important to remember that when habits are formed in the early years, they are extremely difficult to, to change as we age. Um, so, so PE and sport has um, continued to play an important part in my life. I did a PE degree at Leeds Met Uni, met my husband through sport, um, um, and yeah, I continue to play sport and I love everything to do with sport and being physically active. Um, so I've got 14 years of teaching experience at Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. Um, many of those years were as PE subject leader, amongst other things. But I am now currently working for Twinkle as a move content writer and already Sally's touched upon how passionately I feel that children should have a positive experience of PE and exercise as I did um, to set them up for a lifelong healthy relationship with physical activity. So I'm going to whisk through these because they've already been spoken about um, by Gareth but the one at the bottom that wasn't mentioned is um one in eight um five to 19 year olds have at least one mental disorder um on top of obviously the other challenges facing um our children and young people over um, obesity and um lack of or not meeting the daily guidelines of 60 minutes of physical activity every day um and obviously these are set out um in the UK chief medical office physical activity guidelines which were updated last month I believe and they, within these guidelines, they advise us on how much and what type of physical activity the different age groups should be doing. Um, and the main intended, intended audience for these, this report are, are professionals and um, practitioners like ourselves um, who are concerned with sharing and implementing programs that promote physical activity and sport. Um, the guidelines for children um, and young people aged five to 18 years are that they should engage in um, moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity for an average of at least 60 minutes per day across the week and a range on a variety of types and intensities of physical activity across the week and to minimise the amount of time spent being sedentary um, which is sort of being talked about and I'm sure lots of you know about um, but it, unfortunately research has found that um, the majority of UK adults which includes some teachers are actually unaware of the amount of physical activity that children and young people should be doing so obviously it is vital for teachers, parents, sports providers that they have a clear understanding um, of, of the appropriate levels of physical activity. So 60 minutes a day with 30 minutes ideally being done at school. So how can um, we help you to try and build more physical activity into your school day? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the daily move that we do. We have here at Twinkle and also some of our move and learn resources. Um, the Daily Move, first of all, is um, a carefully designed fitness programme for children that focuses on a different physical skill each half term. So um, the beauty of this programme is that um, it can be delivered in, in just 15 minutes every day, but also because the children are doing a different activity every day, it keeps it fun and it keeps them engaged. Um, so there's one for Key Stage 1, there's one for Lower Key Stage 2 and Upper Key Stage 2. and um, 
So we've got one on balance, um, which basically the children do balance and fun activities um, every day of the week. Um, and just to, to point out here, the, the, the guidelines outline the importance of regular strength and balance activity. Um, so being strong and, and balance sort of underpins all of the movements that, that children do and that we do to be able to perform daily tasks up to the more complex sports um, uh, skills. So it's really important. And this is fab, obviously, for um, hitting that one. Um, we've also got um, an aerobic um, pack. Uh, and again, if you refer back to the guidelines, they've recognised the health benefits of performing very vigorous intensity activity. So hit like activities um, uh, in short bouts interspersed with periods of rest or recovery. Um, so the way in which it works um, is that in week one, their children are uh, tested um, with measurable outcomes so that progress can be tracked. And then in weeks two to five, they take part in a range of activities every day. And then in week six, the children repeat the assessment so that you can see how much they've improved. Um, the pack contains activity cards which outline exactly what you would need to do. And they are have been designed so that the children um, are able to use them independently. So perhaps after the first week, when you're getting used to what the activities are by the second week and hopefully beyond that, especially higher up the school, the children are going to be able to run those activities um, themselves um, and the beauty of the of the daily move is that it can be done at any time during the school day um, so to fit in with your timetable if you know you've got 15 minutes here or there and you can build it into your timetable this is a fab way of obviously increasing the active minutes during the school day so I'm going to talk very quickly about some move and learn resources as well so we partnered up with move and learn um, to produce a range of different resources um, Move and Learn is a, a platform where schools can share ideas and support each other um, to be as active as possible. There's tons of research and good practice there. And their sort of background is that um, they believe that being phys a physically active learning, when it's used in the right way and with a clear purpose, um, will give the best possible learning outcomes for children. So um, and the rationale behind it, obviously, we know that move the, the benefits of movement for physical health and mental well-being. But the increase of, of blood and oxygen flow obviously also contributes positively to cognitive development, um, motor function, brain function, um, academic performance, behaviour in children. And they have a greater focus on task. Um, so with that in mind, we've produced some lesson packs um, for maths, SPAG and science, um, which basically enhance the learning experience by infusing um, movement into the lessons. Um, so they'll still follow the national curriculum for maths or whichever area it is that you're doing, but the children will be learning through movement as much as possible. Um, there's also a range of um, um, activity cards, which are maths based, literacy based and obviously and some general ideas, um, which will minimise the amount of time that children have spent obviously in the classroom sitting down. Um, general ideas as well just ways that you can think slightly outside the box and and five minutes here and there if you've got spare time or even just as part of your lesson as a mental starter or a plenary um things like handwriting and letter formation outside on the playground using chalk acting out um as much as possible you could act out this life cycle of a butterfly or how to make a cake obviously a great way great way for proprioceptors proprioceptive learners to learn um, gallery walks so getting out of their seats walking around the classroom to observe artifacts or visual aids songs are a really powerful tool to teach concepts and if it incorporates movement even better and obviously that's you know quite good for lower down the school with key stage one Learning keywords. So you introduce the keywords for the subject during the lesson um, and decide on an action to go with the word. And then um, every time the children hear that word being said, they carry out that action, for example, jumping or whatever it is. Um, movement stations. Quite often, um, I imagine you, you do a carousel of activities within a lesson. Try and incorporate a movement station as one of those activities or alternatively, you can get the children to do a quick workout in between the activities. Um, I've put here such as, as chair, chair aerobics, which is literally aerobics from your chair, <laughs> um, which is great. And obviously you don't need much space for that. 
um, spelling and catching to help with phonics and learning with your spellings, um, perhaps with a beanbag that can be done. Things like calculation tag. Um, so um, children start on a certain number of points and then if they tag, they add on a number of points. If they get tagged, they take away. So you're counting up and back in different values and um, it helps with your addition and subtraction. And even something as simple as um, answering questions with physical responses perhaps to signify whether a fact is true or false or jumping on the spot a certain number of times um, to answer a maths question. I've also included here um, the take it outside card within our um, activity cards and obviously using the most of your outdoor space. Um, it is, it's, it's out there. Children are going to be out in the fresh air um, and it doesn't need to be viewed that it's a break from learning. It's just part of the learning to go out and, and do it whilst being physically active outside. Very quickly, we also do have some um, active break um, uh, PowerPoints, which are literally brain boosters. Again, so not necessarily the focus being on an, a learning outcome, but more just children, if, if they need a little bit of a wake me up. Um, these are very quick and fun activities. There's a range of those. Some are interactive and non-interactive, which I would thoroughly recommend. So moving on to the pros and cons of physical activity on learning. So there's been a lot of talk, obviously, so far. We know the pros uh, for young children and young people improved learning and attainment, better mental health and cardiovascular fitness. And obviously it contributes to healthy weight, weight status. But what are the cons? Um, well, in my opinion, there are none. Um, you may feel that when children are sat down, that they're easier to manage and control and that opening your classroom to movement can feel like you're um, inviting chaos into the room. But we also know that sitting down for long periods of time is not optimal for their learning or healthy for our pupils. So what I want to say is do not fear introducing more physical activity into the school day. Um, and so here are some top tips to help you try and do that. Um, try out a range of options to see what works for your pupils. You know your class the best. Um, introduce different types of physical activity gradually. Don't try everything at once, otherwise it might be slightly chaotic. Um, have the same expectations for behaviour as you would for anything else, um, but understand that the children will explore and push the boundaries with something new. Um, and it may require you as teachers to stretch the boundaries of your own comfort zone as well to begin with. But, but as it becomes the norm, as it becomes something that's embedded into the into the day, it, it will soon settle and you, you will see the benefits. Um, only use physically active learning when it fits. Um, so in the right way and with a clear purpose. Don't try and force a link that's not there. Um, movement is a really powerful teaching tool if it's appropriately incorporated into the school day. So remember that it, it can't be used for all the learning that's happening in the classroom. Um, try to use the same routines with, when you're doing your physical activity. That will help with behaviour management and try and optimise the whole school environment. Um, so think about um, along the corridors when you're lining up and you've got a spare few minutes, what could the children be doing to be being physically active? You know, they're waiting to come in, um, going in, into lunch or they're waiting after lunchtime to come back into the classroom. Um, so small daily games aggregated over time will all add up. Um, and finally, um, this is something that happens at my children's school. They, they come into school in their PE kits on PE days, um, which I think is a brilliant idea because especially down in key stage one, there's some precious minutes of the of the P lesson are taken up with the children getting changed. And obviously, if they're already in their P kits, that's a win-win for more time being spent um, doing the actual activity and the and the PE. And so finally, changing the narrative. Um, we've created this narrative that only certain times of the day are for being physically active in the PE lesson at play times. And even at play times and lunch times, there are a lot of children who are not unfortunately being particularly active either so it's up to us to um, make it the norm that physical activity and exercise can become an integral part of the school day and and then we will hopefully see the physical mental and academic benefits um, from this we have the ability to positively influence physical activity levels for our children and young people it's a huge responsibility but also a great privilege so let's make the most of it <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. That was a really, really good talk. Lots and lots of actionable things there that you could um, try and put into place. Um, to start off with, though, I have a question. Can you give me an example of chair aerobics, please? 
Um, so, yeah, you could do it with your legs, your arms or head movement. So you think about a lot of the actions that you might do in an aerobics class, but you sort of do it sitting down. So lifting your legs up in front of you, out to the side, arm circles, head movements to the left, to the right, even sitting up from your chair and then back down again a certain number of times. Um, there are there are tons of different ways that you can get the children moving whilst on their seats. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and then as a last question from me, um, so obviously, like you say, you don't want to sort of shoehorn this in. Um, but what is a good challenge or a pledge a teacher should set for themselves to try and include more physically active learning in the classroom if they wanted to do like a simple thing um, every day? What's a really good thing that they could try and do? OK, so if it was me and there wasn't really much physical activity happening in the classroom at, at the moment, I would probably start with the, the brain boosters um, which are just really fun and engaging activities for the children and it's the sort of thing that they will really enjoy doing um, and you can use it when you when the children perhaps might need to to be woken up a little bit and get a bit of blood flowing around the body and then they sit back down and straight back on their task again hopefully. Fab good advice and then the uh, another question here um, from Sue in the chat is what advice do you have on encouraging reluctant pupils who have who have, have a negative view of physical activity? It's uh, a good question. I would say that sometimes it comes better from from their peers than perhaps their, their teachers. So um, if your school has play leaders or if they don't, but something like a play leader so that at playtime they can encourage the children to perhaps start being a little bit more active. Um, by playing games, you know, all the play leaders would need is a, a bag with a few um, simple, you know, bean bags, hoops and things like that. And if you've got the older children um, encouraging the younger children to be more active, that's perhaps probably a good way to start.